Over the past few months, I took proud delivery of my brand new 2021 Tesla Model Y Performance. And during the amount of time I spent with the vehicle, there's a lot of accessories that I learned that are, I would definitely consider them to be an essential accessory. So if you're doing research on what accessories you should get on day one, continue watching this video. I'm gonna go ahead and share with you everything that there is to know, as well as I'll include some of my personal favorite accessories that I decided to put on my vehicle. So for the maximum protection, I highly recommend installing a PPF. You can buy a bunch of these kits available on eBay. They usually fluctuate between three to $500. All you really have to focus on is protecting the front end of the Tesla because unlike a regular vehicle, there's no front grill. So everything right here is paint. So throughout the journeys, the highway drives, it's very likely you're gonna start experiencing a lot, of, a lot of rock ships on the paint and all that good stuff. So for peace of mind, if you like to preserve your, your possession, you can install yourself. I installed it myself. There's a couple flaws here and there, but from a distance, it's not at all noticeable, nor do I really care because at the end of the day, this is gonna be a daily driver. It's just good to know that underneath that, the paint perfectly intact. I'll link the video to help me out through this installation process, but you can't always take this to a professional. Just be aware there is that Tesla tax, so this can cost several thousand dollars if you want a professional to install. Me personally, I really don't care. This is just a screen protector, in my opinion, onto my vehicle. That's basically how I explain the PPF. My second number two accessory that's a must have is mud flaps. These things are very inexpensive. I got mine specifically on Amazon for just around $25. They take a matter of seconds to install, and, and they look really good in my opinion. The reason why you wanna consider getting mud flaps is because this part right here on the Tesla is very vulnerable to rocks and chips from the tires. This is usually the sweet spot where rocks usually make contact to the paint. So if you like to preserve your investment once more, highly recommend getting mud flaps or getting the Tesla PPF. I personally wish Tesla included this from factory. Now if you're curious, cosmetic wise, the window tint percentage I went with is 35% in the front and 4% in the back. In case you are unaware, the Model Y comes standard with 45% tint on the rear windows. I forgot the brand that I went with, but I'll have it right here in the video. And so far, from my experience, it does an excellent job keeping the interior cool and also looks fantastic. And also, I guess as an added bonus, it adds a lot of privacy, which is why on the next accessory I recommend is buying these custom sun visors or sunshades, I should say, for the Tesla. This one 100% covers the vehicle and really does add that extra privacy that you want whenever you're fast charging while watching Netflix and doing other stuff. Now, the handlebars on the Tesla Model Y as, as well as the Model 3, it's nice and all, but the texture was really slippery in my opinion. So what I did, I did a little bit of research and I picked up these carbon fiber texture decals. And, and if you look closely, it really does have a unique texture to it. And this adds a lot more grip as well as protection. It adds protection because most people don't know how to pull the handles in the first place and to prevent any cracks for, or other damages to occur from those passengers that don't know how to operate your Tesla door handles. This also adds extra protection. It looks great in the sun rays and feels awesome whenever you grip it and pull it and it's also very inexpensive now the carbon fiber mirrors as well as the carbon fiber camera sensors on the side for autopilot this is just all cosmetic but the carbon fiber mirrors does indeed add protection and looks absolutely fantastic when it's in direct sunlight as well as the cover for the carbon fiber cameras now both of these are just cover on they're just held together by 3m adhesive tape I highly recommend getting official ones that are actually made out of carbon fiber. Don't get these fake plastic ones as they're gonna expose a lot of the white paint. So unless you already have a black Tesla, if you have a brighter color body style, if you get like the Amazon ones for like 50 bucks, I highly do not recommend doing this. This is what I did originally. This is a fake carbon fiber one, just imitates the texture. And there was a lot of exposure around the rear mirrors to the point where I just couldn't take it anymore. So I just went ahead and spent the extra $100 and got the official real carbon fiber ones, which are extremely light go on exactly the same way but they cover the mirror so well that there's no paint being exposed so everything lines up perfectly in other words don't cheap out on carbon fiber just get the official ones and i got this one directly from ebay i'll have a link to it in the description as well like everything else now this next accessory is somewhat of a pain in the butt to install but i highly recommend it especially since it's reasonably priced is sound isolations there's a bunch of brands that sell these isolation kits which basically you just install you just add a little bit more plastic around the trim piece around the doors, the hood, the front, any panel that opens up, you just basically install additional plastic, which will actually isolate the cabinet a lot more 
give me the best isolation sound. So when you're driving on the freeway, it's a lot quiet in the cabinet area. And I highly recommend installing one of this. And it also prevents the interior from getting splashed around like watermarks and such around the door trim. Now when charging with a level two public charger like this, whenever you use the Tesla adapter with one of these, make sure to pick up one of these lock-in adapters. You simply just plug it into place and this will prevent other users from unplugging your connection so they could charge their car without your consent. This adapter is very inexpensive. I highly recommend getting it because of that reason. Now, before we go into the vehicle, it's also important to note that Teslas are different from a regular common car, which means there's no jack point. So if you ever need to do maintenance around the wheel, like change the tires, rotate them and such, you need to pick up one of these jack points. These little plastic hockey pucks, also very inexpensive, and you just insert them on your vehicle. And those are the jack points that will allow you to actually jack up the vehicle so you could do some wheel maintenance or other stuff to the vehicle. This is what's needed to be underneath it if you wanna lift it and jack it up. Now, yes, it's awesome that Tesla does include a level one charger with the purchase of your Tesla, but this charger can be upgraded to the level two as it is compatible, which is why I highly recommend if you have access to one of these NEMA ports, Go on Tesla website and pick up one of these $35 NEMA port adapter. As long as it's the one that you're using for your household, this simply would just plug in and allow you to charge at level two. So instead of having an electrician to come in and install a charger in your household, you may already be able to use dryer outlet or your, maybe your household comes included with two of these. So you may not need to buy, actually purchase the Tesla wall charger or another charger if you wish to charge your vehicle at home. And this should be able to deliver up to 30 miles per hour as well. Now I did went ahead and purchase a Tesla wall charger, which retails for $500. I won't really count this as a necessary accessory because there's a couple of hidden fees. Not only is the unit $500, but installation could cost a thousand dollars and depending on the county the city that you live in you may be required to buy a permit which that can cost up to five hundred dollars which is what cost me so in actuality installing a tesla wall charger in my household in total with the unit and everything cost about two thousand dollars so you have been warned but this does give my vehicle 40 miles of range per hour when i'm charging it this way i usually charge on off peak hours so it's very cheap compared to gasoline at the end of the day still now inside the vehicle the must-have accessory is a glass screen protector for the infotainment system this ipad unit i'll call it i got this on day one and the reason why you want to go ahead and quickly put a screen protector on it is because if anything happens to this if it gets scratched a ding or whatever a crack the replacement cost for this is a thousand dollars or more and a screen protector usually floats between 20 to 40 dollars now it's debatable if you want to go with a matte one or a gloss one i use gloss doesn't really irritate me. Matt, in my opinion, will ruin the whole vibe experience if I'm watching like a Netflix film or something like that or playing games. So that's why I went with the gloss and I have no regrets. Now, you may have noticed I do have the white seats, which if you also went with the white seat, the white vegan leather, I highly recommend ceramic coating your seats. Now the ceramic kit that I picked up is from Amazon. It's $50 and installation is extremely easy. I also purchased the uh, leather cleaner. So I cleaned up the leather seats and then I applied the ceramic coating and literally this only took like 30 minutes or so. And what ceramic coating was supposed to do is it's a chemical compound that allows liquid to just roll off. So it literally would just stay out of the surface, won't even stick, which makes wiping off stains and such extremely easy. So if you're concerned about watermarks or stains in the near future, highly recommend ceramic coating your seats as everything will literally just be a quick wipe away. And yes, my seats have been holding up extraordinarily well. For a vehicle that already has 5,000 miles, it's holding up really nicely. Now you may have noticed I have a radar detector on my Tesla. This is the same radar detector I've been using on all my other vehicles. It's the Passport 360 Max. This thing saved me so many times from, from speed traps and such. And it's been doing me so well that I'm definitely recommending it to you guys. One of the pro advantages from this radar compared to others, it actually has arrows pointing towards the direction of radar that it's detecting. So you have an understanding where that fellow officer might be located. And it will also alert you with speed traps as well as provide you the distance. So you know exactly when that speed trap is coming up. Now the way I have my radar detector wired up in my Tesla, I've just picked up a very long cigarette lighter to a radar detector cable and I just wrapped it around the pillar like so 
and I just run the cable through the center console, tucking everything underneath so everything stays hidden and minimum. And then in case you're wondering, yes, these are Baymax decals. Uh, I just put Baymax on my seats because it's a white, poofy seat, which totally looks like Baymax. So I just threw in a decal there. And yeah, I get so many compliments because of that. So if you're wondering where you could find these decals, I also have it linked in the video description down below. So you could also put it on your white seats. Other than that, another additional accessory that is arriving in the mail is uh, cargo mats. I'm, I ordered just once for the back, for the trunk and the front. The ones inside the cabinet already came included with these standard carpet. And I think in my opinion, that's all I really need. I don't plan on going to places where there's the train is rough, where I will need a heavy duty hard plastic cabin carpet, if you understand what I mean. Another accessory I have is the trim piece. I have this carbon fiber trim piece right here on the dash. The reason why I went was the reason why I decided to put this on. Originally I wasn't going to, but it is true. The white trim piece that comes the standard with the white interior Tesla does reflect a lot of sun glare. So I had to swap it because I was just being blinded by the sun whenever it was a nice sunny day. So this prevents that from happening and that's why I went with the matte texture. There you guys have it. Hope you enjoy. Those are my essential Tesla Model Y accessories. As I mentioned, everything will be linked in the video description down below, so it's literally a click away. If you got some good useful information out of this video, I'd greatly appreciate if you actually leave this video a like. Those help me out a lot. They let me know that you like to see, watch more of these videos in the near future. So if you do, hit that subscribe button as I, as I basically cover a lot of tech videos in general. If you'd like to see more, maybe you wanna check out the past video I made with my Tesla Model Y, you can go ahead and watch this video over here as I recently reviewed it after one month of ownership. And I share with you my experience owning the Y Performance. And in that video over there, there are some very important things you need to know before picking up your Tesla Model Y so you can get the most out of that vehicle. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.